It's spring 1995, 10 years since a young Simon Fraser University pipe band burst onto the global piping scene by placing second at the 1985 Grade 1 World Pipe Band Championships, almost knocking off powerhouse Strathclyde Police. Now after slipping to seventh at the Worlds in 1994 and an RSPBA announcement of a rule change on the order of play at championships, SFU Pipe Major Terry Lee is looking at a dismal order of play as an overseas band at the Worlds in August 1995. So us finishing seventh in 94 meant that we would, I'm, you know, Rob McNeil might correct me here, but we would be at, at latest we would be seventh on from the end. Maybe even the way they slotted overseas bands they might drop us fur further back. I'm not sure about that. We might have been as low as tenth on. A place where it's super hard to win the Worlds at that time. So if you're seventh from the end, you're you're an hour to an hour and a half from the end. That's a long time. And if you're in the in the final three, for example, you're playing in the last half hour. So you're fresh. You're fresh and when it's in doubt, I think that's where the, the result's going. Knowing this, Terry Lee has a closer look at the recent RSPBA order of play rule change. When it comes to the world championship order of play in August, band placement is determined by how you did in the just previous championship. That would be the Scottish championships in Stirling on June 24th. Terry saw an opportunity. And I thought that, I thought that was one of the most exciting things I ever heard. Because being a competitor and knowing that we had a good team, I thought, we got to do this. We got to find a way to get to, to Scotland twice. We've got to go to that championship prior somehow. And I just recall, I vividly recall dragging the band into a room at a school and saying, I want to do this. That information came out and we thought, let's just go for it. It became, became kind of a, a mantra within the band. The, the, the term just go for it has been a thing that we've done all these years. So we just went for it. Translation, we bought plane tickets, we went to Scotland, we played at the Scottish. Make it happen, I think. Make it happen. Two trips to Scotland in one year for an overseas band? It was a bold move with a lot of questions. You know, how could we make this possible? Were people going to be able to have time? Would we have enough people who could go? Could it be affordable? Um, and then a little bit of involvement. How are we going to get there and make sure that stuff doesn't get lost? And the, airlines and started using cargo containers to get all the drums in and uh, so a whirlwind of preparation and organization and if I remember correctly I think it was kind of a last minute kind of a, a plan and it was okay so you're le we're leaving Thursday getting there Friday competing Saturday and coming home Sunday for rookie Danny Miller it would be her first trip to Scotland if she was asked to play. So I remember just going to practices thinking, well, no one has told me that I'm not going on this trip yet. And eventually <laughs> they just handed out tickets of practice and lo and behold, I had a ticket. So it was right up till the end. I know I remember <laughs> thinking, I, I guess I'm going to Scotland for the first time. The weekend trip to Scotland came with another surprise. It's like, it's not like it here in, in June, it's gonna be cold. So I packed all these really warm clothes and then we got off the plane and it was roasting hot. The whole trip was such a blur. It was a weekend of adrenaline. And I just remember how hot it was. And I remember how happy the band was uh, with our placing. You know, we ended up placing third that day in a very good performance in a good class. I probably right to be third there. And, but third place was exciting because it was way better than at, at best seventh. Um, we were now third from the end of the world. It was really a really nice day. We competed in the sun and made our way back to Glasgow after we stopped. I think Jack might have spent the, uh, the, the, the check or the monies that we got for our third place. I think he spent it in the fish and chip shop on the way home in Stirling. I distinctly remember it. <laughs> Just for the record, I am the treasurer, but I didn't spend it on myself. It was for the, <laughs> for the team. We went in and bought fish and chips for everybody. But you know what? I learned that we are just as, just as good as those guys right now and that uh, we're very competitive. And when we finished third, I remember thinking that was great. And we, we did what we wanted to do, but it seemed like kind of a fair result to me at the time that we deserved third. With a third place finish in their pocket from Sterling, the band set its sights on August. What was that six weeks like, June to? I think it's intense. I think you're talking about me fired up. Like I, like I can only get fired up. You know what I mean? I was ready for this. Um, again, not about to win it, but to just give it our best shot. 
And I re remember that band being so ready to go in 95. Um, just ready to, ready to lay down great performances. All right. I remember the band being more ready to go right at, right, right at the start, like uh, get the pipes going out of the out of the box and having having a sound that was that was presentable. I think one of the things I remember is because we had worked so hard to get to a certain level in June that we kept working hard and it was easy to get to the next level in August. The gamble had paid off. The trip to Sterling positioned the band for a serious run at the World Championships. Everyone was ready. But was the world ready for an overseas upset? That's next in part two, SFU winning the world.